Okay, in this video we're going to look at a result in elementary group theory that ties together these three following notions. So we want to start with just any arbitrary group. We want to consider the group of automorphisms of G. And so, in other words, we have isomorphisms from G to G. That forms a group. We'll prove that. Then we want to look at the subgroup of inner automorphisms of G. So those are all automorphisms from G to G that are defined by conjugation by a single element. In other words, uh, iota G of, a, of X equals G X G inverse. So those are automorphisms defined that way. And then the center of G, which are all elements which commute with every other element of G. So the result that we prove will tie all of these together. So the first thing that I want to do is claim that the automorphisms of G uh, form a group um, with a composition of functions is the operation. So uh, the proof here, which I'll just really sketch instead of doing a really proper proof, is actually uh, pretty straightforward. And the first thing that we want to notice is that we definitely have an identity. And that would be just uh, the identity map. So we could call this like iota from uh, G to G defined by um, iota of G is G. So that's clearly an automorphism. And um, uh, when you compose it with another automorphism, you will end up with the automorphism that you started with. Okay, good. And now uh, let's look at inverses. And so it's uh, pretty easy to check if uh, phi from G to G is an isomorphism, then phi inverse uh, from G to G is also an isomorphism. But what that tells you is that uh, if phi is in this set of automorphisms of G, then uh, phi inverse is also in this set of automorphisms of G, which is exactly what we need. Okay, then uh, maybe the next thing that we need to show is that we have associativity. But that like very easily follows uh, from the associativity of composition of functions. So it's well known that the composition of functions is associative. So uh, the associativity in our group setting also follows. So um, and another thing that we might want to check is that it, we have closure. Um, but I'll leave it to you to think about that. Uh, it's clear that the cl that the um, composition of two automorphisms is going to give you a new automorphism. So we're good to go there. Okay. So I'll clean up the board, and then we will show that the uh, set of inner automorphisms forms a subgroup of uh, the group of automorphisms. So like I said, the next thing that we want to show is that the set of inner automorphisms forms a subgroup of the, of the group of automorphisms of G. And so we'll do that with the subgroup test. And so uh, let's just recall real quick what the subgroup test says. It says that H is a subgroup of G if and only if uh, for all X and Y in H, we have X, Y inverse is also in H. So that's the subgroup test. So I've reused G. You know, this is just kind of an arbitrary group G, not the one that we're talking about the automorphisms of up there. So if we want to show that the inner automorphisms are a subgroup of the automorphisms, well, what we need to do is take maybe uh, Yoda G, uh, X and Y in the inner automorphisms of G. And then uh, see what it takes for... Uh, uh, iota X composed with iota Y inverse to be in the inner autom automorphisms of G. So maybe the first thing that we want to notice is that the inverse of this automorphism is given by 
the automorphism defined by the inverse of that element. And now we can check that uh, really quick in the following way. Notice if we compose yoda y with yoda y inverse and apply that to g, that's going to be the same thing as, um, so working from the inside to the outside, we have y, y inverse, g, y, y inverse. Great. So we have something like that. But notice that's just exactly G, which is uh, the identity automorphism applied to G. So that means that these are inverses of each other. So that's good. Now the next thing that we want to do is compose Yoda X with Yoda Y inverse um, and see what we get. So let's do that. So let's notice that we have this uh, composed with Yoda Y inverse, which I'll write in that way. And now let's apply that to G and see what we get. So that's going to give us um, uh, X, let's see, Y inverse, G, Y, X inverse. So working from the inside to the outside. So notice we have the uh, differing orders on the inverses and the non-inverses, and that's because we have Y inverses inside of this thing here. Okay, good. But uh, now what we can notice is that's the same thing as X, Y inverse times G times X, Y inverse inverse using the shoes and socks theorem for the last bit. But that is exactly Yoda uh, X, Y inverse applied to G. Great. But what that tells us, since this is for an arbitrary G, that Yoda X composed with Yoda Y inverse equals Yoda X uh, Y inverse, which is in the inner automorphisms of G. Great. So we know that this is a subgroup. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up the board and then we will get to our final result, which is going to involve these inner automorphisms as well as this center of G. So the claim that we want to make is as follows. G mod the center of G. So uh, it's easy to check that the center of G is a normal subgroup, so that makes sense, is isomorphic to the inner automorphism group of G. And we will prove this using the first isomorphism theorem, which uh, means we need to define some sort of homomorphism from G to the inner automorphism group of G, which, uh, like we saw before, this is a subgroup of the automorphism group of G. Okay, great. And so we'll define that in the following way. So let's take phi of G to be equal to uh, yoda G, um, where just as up here, this thing is defined in the following way. So we have G X G inverse. Okay, great. So uh, now I guess what we want to show is that this is indeed a homomorphism. And so uh, let's do that. And uh, we can do that in the following way. Let's take phi of gh. And since that is going to be a function, we need to apply it to an element of g in order to get a feel for what it is. So we will apply it to x. But now notice that's going to be yoda uh, gh applied to x, which is going to be gh x gh inverse which by the shoes and socks theorem, that's going to give us G H X H inverse G inverse. I should say that I'm using associativity in the group as well, but it's easy to check now that that is going to be uh, Yoda G Yoda H applied to X, which is phi of G phi of H applied to X. But since X was an arbitrary element from the group, what we have is that phi of GH is equal to phi of G phi of H. So this is a homomorphism. Okay, so I'll clean up the board. Next thing we need to do is show that this is onto, and then we can calculate its kernel in order to get this result. Okay, so we checked that this thing was a homomorphism. We also like need to check that it's surjective. We're not actually gonna check this very, uh, carefully by writing it out. I'll just like talk about why that's true. So notice, let's take something from the inner automorphism group. Well, that's given exact, exactly by these group, this 
a set of functions which act by conjugation, but we can find a preimage just by taking this group element here. So it's kind of obviously surjective. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and find the kernel. So notice that the kernel of phi is going to be all g in g such that phi of g, which is equal to yoda g, is equal to the identity map, which early we, earlier we called that yoda, but I'm just going to call it id so that it doesn't uh, look like uh, this thing right here. But now notice what that really tells us is that yoda of g evaluated at x equals the identity evaluated at x, which is x, and that's got to be true for all x in g. Okay, great. But notice that's the same thing as saying that uh, gx g inverse equals x, uh, which is the same thing as saying gx equals x g. And again, like I said before, that's for all x in g. Great. But that's exactly what it takes for g to be in the center. And so, uh, and these are all if and only if statements. So what that tells us is that if g is in the kernel of phi, then g satisfies this, if and only if g satisfies this, if and only if g satisfies this, but that's exactly as uh, g being in the center of g. So now applying the first isomorphism theorem, we know that um, g mod the kernel is equal to the image, or isomorphic to the image. So we have G mod the kernel, which is the center, is isomorphic to the image, but this thing is surjective, so the image is this entire inner automorphism group. So that finishes the proof of this claim, and we're done with this video.